Could your diet lead to you becoming depressed, anxious, or even violent? Ben here, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you how essential diet is not just to your mood, but your family's overall well-being by taking a look at the field of nutritional psychology, why we eat what we eat, why you can eat well, but still feel like hell, and the foundational element to great mental health that even some doctors and psychologists miss that could be the answer you've been looking for. This is a mini masterclass, so grab a coffee and let's dive in. Work harder, run faster, think smarter. The hustle until you die culture is killing us. Millions are stressed and depressed. I was one of them. I went on a 90 day mission to biohack my way back to health. The result, my best selling book, Unstoppable, daily journal and online program that's changed thousands of lives and is praised by athletes, psychologists and doctors. And now it's your turn to become unstoppable. If you're new to this channel, my name is Ben and I've helped tens of thousands of people biohack their way out of depression, fatigue and stress back into optimal health. Now, before we begin, I want to let you know that we're giving away a free digital gut health report and two free chapters from my brand new book, Mind Control, that explores the latest in nutritional psychology and the gut microbiome. So if you have unexplained fatigue, anxiety, depression, weight gain, or you're constantly catching colds and flus, stick around till the very end for the details. But first, I've got a question for you. Are you prone to angry outbursts, mood swings, depression, anxiety? If so, most people tend to fall into one of these four categories. One, they try and use willpower to suppress it, which results in unhealthy outbursts at a later stage. Two, they apply psychology and mindful techniques to help tame the inner beast. Three, they fixate their anger on a person or an event, which can lead to something known as revenge addiction, in which they get a burst of dopamine when they feel like they're getting retribution. Hmm, think politics. And four, they take an antidepressant to help, which I'm all for in appropriate circumstances, no one should ever be judged for doing so. But there must be a caveat, and that is that the doctor or psychologist that's helping you with this is also helping you to work out the root cause. Otherwise, some symptoms may be masked and come out in different ways that are unexpected. The problem, not all of these strategies work for everybody. We need a more comprehensive approach so that nobody falls through the cracks. And that begins by asking yourself, could your diet be causing emotional chaos directly? It's important to know that nutrition can amplify or reduce your experience to negative events, such as stress, a pandemic, economic collapse, a relationship breakdown. It's literally like turning up the heat on the stovetop to the point it burns down the whole house if it goes unchecked. It does so by either supporting or interfering with your brain function. And if nutrition is the major cause of your symptoms, if everything else has been ruled out, including trauma, it doesn't matter how much mindfulness, self-help and counseling work you do, which is all phenomenal. But if you find you're not getting better, the nutritional aspect may be that missing link, even if you're currently eating well you're using a hammer when in fact, you may need a nail. Here's what I mean. A British study carried out in the late 1980s gave prisoners vitamins and mineral supplements to see if it would decrease their anger management issues. Well, fascinatingly, that study showed that violent incidents in prison dropped by at least 35% in the two weeks after the supplements were added to their food. A similar study of 200 prisoners in the Netherlands in 2006 to 2007 showed a drop of 34% in incidences utilizing that same supplement. Multiple studies have exposed the link between violent or aggressive personality traits in children and adults with nutrient deficiencies. Accordingly, iron deficiencies have been linked to conduct disorder and juvenile delinquency, while zinc deficiencies have been linked to aggression, violence, and even hyperactivity. With nutritional deficiency on the rise due to fast food, poor food quality, and changes in the gut microbiome, we not only need to look at what we eat, we need to look at how our bodies process it and why we eat it in the first place. Otherwise, some people will just keep spinning their wheels wondering why nothing, and I mean nothing, helps them. Well, we do this by exploring and fully understanding 
two critical components. The first, nutritional psychology, and two, the gut microbiome. The first, we need to understand what nutritional psychology is and why it's important that you know. Well, nutritional psychology, NP, is the psychological study of how cognitive choices such as meal decisions can influence nutrition, psychological health, and overall health. But it also demonstrates how our food choices affect our moods, emotions, and our intentions. Nutritional psychology seeks to understand the relationship between nutritional behavior and mental health and well-being. And according to the Center for Nutritional Psychology, the term was first defined in 2005. This isn't some recent trend. It's a field that's gaining more traction and for very good reason. You see, back in 1977, Dr. George Angel challenged the whole way that we approach mental health and determined that sociological and psychological determinants were just as important as biological ones. He coined the term the biopsychosocial model. It was a radical new approach working holistically with all of the influences in a patient's life, their biology, social impacts, and psychological perspectives, not just one or the other. His model includes biological influences like genetics, brain chemistry, as well as brain trauma or damage, social aspects like early life experiences, life events and stresses, as well as relationships and family. Psychological perspectives, how a person perceives something as adverse or detrimental. Subsequently, there's been further addition to his model that creates an even larger multifaceted approach to peeling away the mental health continuum. Now including environment, like toxins, pollution, your home and your work environments, and economical. And this is interesting. A review of 27 studies in 10 countries found that unhealthy food is about $1.50 cheaper per day than healthy food. Economic instability, like what we're experiencing here in the US, is only going to add to emotional instability already being experienced by triggering nutritional deficiencies, resulting in brains that are effectively being starved of nutrients that are needed to function properly. All of these contribute to the answer of why we eat what we eat and why we feel the way that we feel. But there are other factors that we need to consider beyond just the nutritional deficiencies, such as gut microbial imbalance or an overgrowth of bad gut bacteria that could be triggered by a course of antibiotics which I'm gonna be covering in detail in an upcoming video. Secondly, hunger hormones that have been thrown into disarray due to not just a lack of sleep, way too much stress and anxiety that the general population is feeling. Now, I experienced this recently when I fostered two adorable puppies who were up four to five times throughout the night. It completely threw my hunger hormones out of whack and I began eating sugar and carbs, foods that I don't typically eat, so I had to do a gut reset. Plus, there are many other factors that we also need to consider, and there's also a very good reason why my new book, Mind Control, is 95,000 words long, because the truth is the confusion in the marketplace around what to eat, why people don't heal from disease, and dietary recommendations needed a huge overhaul, which leads us to the next key element your gut health and the gut microbiome. As I share in Mind Control, the gut microbiome is vital to our overall well-being. For simply, if your gut health is less than ideal, it's not gonna have the right microbial diversity for you to properly absorb key nutrients needed for proper brain function, hence the starved brain metaphor. You can easily tell if your gut health isn't up to par based on your symptoms, such as bloating, alternating constipation to diarrhea, unexplained weight gain, fatigue, brain fog, and of course, headaches. But why is the gut so critical? Well, you most likely will have heard about the gut being known as our second brain due to the vagus nerve and its production of serotonin, but it is more complex than that. The vagus nerve is the super two-way highway sharing information from our gut to our brain, and it extends from the brain stem to the abdomen. Just as our brain can send messages to our gut, like when a scary thought gives us butterflies in our stomach, the good bacteria in our gut can also communicate with our brain, affecting how we feel at any given time. And according to recent studies, certain strains of probiotics, otherwise known as psychobiotics, 
seem to help alleviate temporary feelings of stress, anxiety and depression, most likely by communicating with the brain and producing important neurotransmitters like GABA, the calming chemical, and of course serotonin, the happy chemical. The research also indicates that psychobiotics can also reduce levels of cortisol as stress hormone. In a large population study, part of the Flemish Gut Flora project, researchers investigated the correlation between the microbiome factors and quality of life, as well as depression. Not only did they find a link between the gut microbiome and mental health, but they were able to actually catalog the exact names of bacteria associated with good and bad quality of life, which is one of the many reasons that I highly recommend people do a gut health test. And if that's something you're interested in, make sure you see your free gut health report for details. As you can see, you can't have a properly functioning brain without good nutrition, or without the foundation of the gut microbiome being in a healthy state. This also explains why some people can eat well, but they still feel like hell. It's because although their diet may be healthy, they don't have the microbial diversity that they need to absorb key nutrients, modulate their cortisol levels, and produce serotonin, among other vital neurotransmitters for mental health. While many profess that they understand how important nutrition is, a survey of over 50,000 in which we asked each 30 questions on psychological and physiological health that makes up the basis for your free gut health report showed that rates of depression, mood swings, suicidal tendencies went up as the percentage of healthy meals eaten went down, which raises a red flag. Although many know how important it is to eat well, they still don't. We need to bridge the gap between knowing and actually doing. Hence, we use a framework for our members that cover both nutritional psychology and its foundation, gut health, so nobody gets left behind. It also sets them up for life. While you or I may be healthy right now, that doesn't mean that in the future, we will experience a bump in the road. It could be an emotional upheaval that leads us to not getting enough sleep, which in turn alters our gut microbiome impacts our hunger hormones and suddenly we're craving and eating carbs and sugars that throw everything out of whack. The inflammation triggered by this change in diet may slow down our thinking. If this new pattern continues, it kicks off this snowball effect. Something small can trigger a cascade of negative outcomes, including depression. It then becomes a nasty cycle of, I feel sad, so I'll eat carbs and sugars, which make me feel better momentarily. Then I crash, I feel sad again, hence I need more of it, and then the cycle continues. Once you understand these cycles, you can start to piece together things really quickly so you can get back on your feet faster than before, especially as we age and there are other physiological changes that we need to adapt to. We've had member success stories that have shown that by focusing on nutrition for mood, and the gut microbiome to ensure it gets absorbed. They suddenly lose weight, the brain fog lifts, their mood improves, and they finally get their energy back after having tried literally everything, every diet and every supplement known to mankind. Small steps make for big changes, and that could be as simple as replacing one food type with another, gradually, or even kicking off your journey with intermittent fasting, that I'll talk about in an upcoming video. So now that you know the basics of nutritional psychology and the gut microbiome, and why when focused on at the same time can totally change people's lives, as you can imagine, it doesn't stop there. In fact, that's just the start because you wanna use these lessons to start to repair your gut, your mind, and of course your mood ASAP, which is why I've created a free online gut health report that's gonna help you identify your likelihood of obesity, fatigue, digestive distress, carb cravings, and more based on our survey of over 50,000 people and 1.5 million pieces of data that we've collected from around the globe. This free report is going to help you to pull these missing pieces together. You're also gonna learn which gut health test and probiotics that I recommend so you can feel better faster. Then to help you even further, we're also gonna give you the introduction and two full free chapters for my brand new book, Mind Control, how to biohack your weight, mind, and immune system using nutritional psychology and the gut microbiome. Mind Control is the follow-up to my bestseller, Unstoppable, that won best self-help book of 2020 
has been translated into two languages and has sold well over 70,000 copies. Unstoppable has been praised by doctors, psychologists, nutritionists, as well as athletes. Which is why I'm so excited to present to you Mind Control because it's gonna help you to take back control of your mood, really understand why you eat, what you eat, why we're physically full but emotionally empty, the missing micronutrients and your starving brain, the best diets for treating depression, anxiety and fatigue, and various gut health related issues, plus so much more. It's easy to get overwhelmed by dietary advice that's conflicting in nature. My goal with Mind Control is to make it easy for you so it takes the pain out of the process. So if you're interested in your free gut health report and sample chapters from Mind Control, the link is in the description below. If you like this video, go ahead and click the subscribe button and tell us, will you be looking at what you eat more closely? Leave a comment for us below. For now, I can't wait to see you for the next video. Take care.